So what's up you guys? It's your boy Sir Vex and naman nga pala. So back at it again another video. Sa video natin yan to another creepy story, a horror reaction video. So may nahanap ulit akong video na re-reactan natin at samahan nyo. Kung gusto nyo mapanood yung video sa Reeling Oras Miss, lalay ko yung link ng video sa description box down below para mabisita nyo siya. And simulan natin yung video na to. Um, the video is from Mr. Nightmare. Um, I'm gonna pili ko yung the an uh, the animated true horror stories. Mas pili pili ko siyong mga animated stories kasi meron siya nung parang mga kahit animated siya is yung pinapakita sa parin yun na yari like from the previous video sa medyo disturbing siya para sa akin kahit animated lang so malay mo makita din tayo na ganon dito so let's start the video. <laughs> Let's start the video in 3, 2, and 1. How much volume is that? I've been staying in my apartment in Jersey City during this coronavirus epidemic. My roommate has since gone home to Ohio. Ah, connected to the ECQ. So I've been in the apartment alone. June 3. Hala, kanina lang pa yung upload. Kasi pinili ko yung ano eh. Pinili ko yung pinaka-latest na video sa channel niya. A couple days ago, I was running extremely low on food, so mm -hmm. I had to make a mandatory grocery run. Yes, wear your PPE. I went to the nearby Trader Joe's wearing a mask and gloves, which, mask including gloves. the insane line and limited stock, turned out to be a production. On my walk home in the dark, I realized the streets were even quieter than they were the last time I went shopping, just a week before. So I'm in my curfew, eh. Yung Suddenly, dapat yung hour, hour, some guy hour. wearing a mask and gloves approached me. He had a baby wrapped in a hoodie and small blanket in his hands. He seemed very sincere in asking me to let him take his son to my apartment real quick so he could change his diaper and feed him his food. No. He swore to me that he was clean also, and that he his really face needed his favor for just five minutes. That it was an emergency. Hearing the baby's little cries and the fact that this man even had a child with him and just seemed sincere, the soft part of me agreed. I led him to my apartment building. It was only a short walk from there. By the way, um, up the three to about the animation. I inside, Ang ganda lang ng animation, like it's, it, it's close to realistic. I a spot on the living room table for him to change his child's diaper and whatever. Mm -hmm. When I turned around, the man was like pacing around. Or more like snooping around, I guess. Dun pa lang, I went into my kitchen to do God knows what. I called over to him that I set up the table for him to use. Mm -hmm. He didn't answer. I started getting confused. I walked to the kitchen and saw him looking around suspiciously. And what else I saw confused me. The man was standing with what I thought was his child, held in only one hand. It's it took a plastic me a child. Understand. It wasn't a child. It was just some baby doll wrapped up in a blanket. I'm assuming so one of why. those realistic ones that make the crying and moaning noises. Baby alive. <laughs> Pulled out a gun from his right pocket. Oh, come on. That's where things went from one to a hundred real quick. He looked at me with a gun aimed at me and said something along the lines of, I'm going to take what I want and you're going to stay in my sight. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had to say okay with a gun aimed at my head. I wondered Why did if he it even could approve be a in the first gun place? tip painted black. But even if it was, I doubted right? I could overpower him. I couldn't risk it. The man pulled out a big black bag from his backpack and of filled course. it with valuables, including my wallet, some of my roommate's jewelry, kitchen valuables, my brother's Xbox, which he lent me, Not the and my Xbox. iPad. It was sickening to watch, but I was the most scared of him pulling the trigger of that gun. Mm -hmm. He filled his bag and threw the fake baby in it as well. Then he left. I called the cops first thing. They came and helped me in contacting the building owner to see the CCTV footage from the halls. Of course, upon seeing the footage, it didn't help much. The man's face was covered by a mask, making it near impossible to even discover who he was. Yeah. All I can do is urge everyone to be careful, not to trust anyone, and stay indoors until all of this is over. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was fine. Okay. Next story. Balitat lo I was taking a road trip in my Mustang from Texas to Arizona to visit my brothers. I usually keep emergency supplies in the trunk, such as water and tools. 
I was taking, I guess, what you would call a scenic back route because I liked flying at high speeds with the top down without worry of other cars or police. This was one of those completely deserted seeming roads with one lane on either side and nothing but desert sand, cacti, and shrubs as far as the eye can see. I was flying down this road when the car started to emit these concerning popping noises from under the hood and the car started to jolt or jump slightly. I put a heavy foot on the brakes to bring the car from a speeding 90 miles per hour to a less than gradual halt. Mm -hmm. I got out from the car popping the hood, pretending as if I'd even know what to expect or how I'd go about fixing it. There was no smoke, nothing like that, but I didn't have a clue what could be the problem. I got back in my car to try and start it, and as I feared, the damn thing wouldn't even start back up now. The car was an 01 Ford Mustang, so yeah, it was an old car with a share of problems. Naturally, I tried to call my roadside service company, but bad became worse, realizing I didn't have any service this far out in the desert. I was more or less stranded. I hadn't seen a single other car pass me that whole hour I was driving on that road. Well, you like I was scared that. to think how long it would take for someone you to pass. prefer it that way, remember? I waited on the side of the road, sitting on my car's trunk for literally hours, sweating my ass off. My spirits rose when I saw the shine of a car reflecting the sunlight speeding down the road in the horizon. Mm -hmm. I hopped that off my dangerous. trunk and started walking and waving my arms out for help. Your only hope, but, the car didn't but stop. it's dangerous. It zoomed past me. Oh. Pure evil. I didn't know how somebody Pure could evil. leave another human being stranded like that. Nightfall came and the hunger was setting in. No cars had passed since the first, and I was trying to fill my stomach with the water bottles I had in my trunk. Pero ano, sa panahon niya, hindi naman talaga natitigil eh. I had, well, I had my car's hazards on, but I also waved my arms ginagawa. once more. The truck pulled to the side, and a fairly large man stepped out. I told him my car broke down, and asked if he knew anything about cars. But he didn't immediately seem interested in my car. He more so seemed interested in asking me if I was alone, where I was going, Okay. Why I didn't just call for you help. Gotta doubt that. And he asked you me if anyone knew I was here. These questions were certainly making me uncomfortable. Yes. He finally offered me a ride. Though if he was trying to make a point of making me uncomfortable, he accomplished that. I stepped up into his pickup truck and off Why? we started driving. He said it would be a long while before either of us would have phone service. Mm -hmm. He started asking me more questions, like why I would decide to take a back route like this. Minutes in, the truck started to slow down, and I heard him mutter, Ah, shit. He pulled onto the sand on the side of the road, looked at me, and said the piece of crap broke down. This couldn't be happening. I looked back at the man, and realized he was still looking at me. Like five seconds went by, and he was just still staring okay, at me. Okay, that is creepy. He finally asked me to go lift up the hood once he would crank the latch. I can only describe this whole situation so well, but through everything up until this point, I was insanely suspicious. Mm -hmm. I went in front of his truck with a bit of distance between the front and I, and waited to hear a click, meaning the truck's hood was unlatched. In my head, I was picturing him trying to run me over, and that's exactly what happened. As I took one step towards the truck to try and open the hood, I heard the roar of the engine as the man was on the gas. Oh, come on. I go for my life. If I reacted half a second later, I'd have lost my legs or instantly been killed. Yeah, right. I took off running into the pitch black night, looking back to see the taillights still there. And then this. Gunshots. Surely gunshots aimed Bro, at run. me. That man was trying to kill me. It was too dark out there for him to possibly shoot me dead without some kind of luck. But I thought I was going to die at any moment. I heard a truck speeding off in the distance. Mm -hmm. So I turned and saw the taillights of the truck slowly disappearing down the empty road. I eventually fell asleep on the side of the road, and the nightmare didn't end until early morning, when I woke up to another pickup truck passing by. I waved them down, covered in dirt and sand, and thank God this man was actually normal. He and his wife. They gave me water and drove me to the nearest town, where I was able to call the towing company. It was a 45 minute drive back to my car on that goddamned road, then that same distance back to bring it into a shop. Long story short, this was the worst trip and experience of my life. Will you do it Having again? someone try to run you over and then shoot at you isn't something you simply get over. Yes. Will you do it again though? How are these horror though? When I was 19, 
My friend Sean, who was a big goofball, Pero came over to chill in our still, basement. It's a real life story, kaya medyo, ganun yung I remember horror. he had a coke bottle in his hand and I was eating Wendy's. Horror experience. And he said we should check out that creepy little cemetery Siguro. across town. It was the most random idea ever, and I even told him that. Still, we had no school the next day, and mm -hmm. I knew exactly which cemetery he was talking about. I don't know if one should even call it a regular cemetery. It's just Why? a small plot of land with maybe 100 tombstones at most. The tombstone's very archaic looking, and any time we'd pass, there would be no signs of anyone having come to visit within the last decade. The site so probably that? dated back centuries, and it had this super creepy vibe to it because it was closed off by a gothic metal fence, and it was surrounded by woods on two sides, the road on one, and some old abandoned building on the other. Mm -hmm. Everything about it just gave scary vibes. It took a little persuading, but Sean managed to get me to want to check it out the too. Animation, though. Ironically, it was a very cloudy, wettish kind of day. I guess conveniently adding to the mood. Sean pulled up his Honda to the side of the road. Honda. I told him to Is pull that how up more so it, it wasn't obvious. Honda. This was a low traffic road, so it would look kind of suspicious. He pulled up a few hundred feet down the road, and we got out and cut through the woods so that any potential passing traffic wouldn't see us entering the little cemetery. Yeah. Hopping the fence in the woods was easy. It was really a three or so four bored. foot fence. Sean kind of took the lead on this since it was mainly his venture. He led us through the eerie little plot of land and we looked at the archaic tombstones. They all seemed to be from the 19th century. Why gotta look like the that? writing on some of them was illegible at that point. I know it sounds super dumb and cliche. I couldn't help but My feel like will I was not being be watched like constantly. If I'm in the, in the I started cemetery. looking around the surrounding woods. I told Sean how creepy this was. I know, he replied. Still, with the feeling of being watched, I looked at the abandoned building next to the cemetery, at one of the windows. For a brief moment, I knew I saw someone I standing at the window, even through the fog, smudge, and dirt on the glass. They casually either ducked or walked away from the window. I told Sean we were being watched by someone in that building, and he turned to look at it as well. Is that he his went middle to look finger? For the entrance to it. I told him don't. I said we should just leave before we get in trouble. Yes. I stayed still by the tombstone he was looking at while he walked around the building, and then he found a way in. He called me over, but I Bro, stayed just, put. Just get back home. And I heard some loud it's kind of that crap. Way. So I looked in that direction, and there was this older man, probably Bro, around run. 55. Gray hair, had on a black raincoat, I believe he run. was wearing jeans, and he had a mustache, but that's all I really got of him. Get out of my that, property! He opened his mouth and screamed, not just yelled, he screamed, get out. He screamed it so loud, get I thought out. I saw birds fly away from being startled. And just like that, I started to feel lightheaded, and suddenly everything went dark. <laughs> okay, the I next thing I off. remember was waking up to being dragged in the woods. I freaked out, thinking I was being kidnapped. So where's your friend? But when I turned and got up, I saw no. it was just Sean. Sean was freaking out about something. He told me to follow him and run back to the car, so I didn't ask questions. As we ran through the woods, I heard something close behind me, and when I turned, I realized we were being followed by someone, so I ran even faster. Is it the same guy? We got to his Honda, and he basically put it in drive before the car even had a chance to fully start. Bruh. When Sean was inside that abandoned building, he found a sigil of Baphomet painted on the wood floor, which is basically the sign of Satan. Around it were a bunch of Y'all will be sacrifices if we didn't run. He didn't get to see anything else in the building, because he heard the old man scream at me outside. He came running to find me passed out on the floor. Why though? Saw the old like, man who would look like that? Like... He started to drag me away from the old man and into the woods. He actually literally picked me up and threw me over the fence to get me out. I quickly came back to consciousness and that's when we ran. Yes. I had only Thank fainted you, one time in my life and it was at that moment. I don't know why I fainted, but it happening at a graveyard with some kind of satanic ritual building right next to it makes it yeah. that much stranger. His voodoo powers made you dizzy. Okay, we're done here. <laughs> so that's that. So we're done with this video. So, siguro yung pagkakaintindi ko sa mga ano, sa mga sa mga video, sa tatlong video na to is ang description nila ng horror is like um, true to life horror story, something that disturbs them or like haunts their he their head. 
Siguro yun yung idea kung bakit ganito. Like, hindi siya tulad nung dati na parang fictional or scary talaga spiritual, spiritually ghosts. Like that. Like, may mga ghosts talaga. So, we're done with this video. So, masabi ko sa video, sa tatlong videos na to is, um, it wasn't that uh, eerie. It wasn't that scary. Pero, it was kind of disturbing sa ibang parts. Um, lalo na itong, ano, itong pahuli. Kasi meron siyang about a satanic ritual. Mga ganun, ganun. So, parang dun ako kayo nabahin. Girera here! <laughs> Yun yung parang mila akong naisip sa mga, ano, sa mga may ganun, ano. May ganun mustache. By the way, guys, promote ko lang yung channel na Erlano Family. Subscribe tayo sa channel nila. Also, watch their content. Kasi napakaganda ng content nila. Because they show family love sa ating mga viewers so make sure bisitahin nyo yung channel nila and enjoy their content. So guys, maraming salamat sa pernood. If you guys have any other contents na gusto nyo reactan ko, um, horror or other try not to something something, um, try not to laugh, try not to get scared, try not to cry, try not to something something something, question mark, nani, just leave it in comment section down below then gag uh, gagamitin natin yan sa next video as a content and kung gusto nyo itong video na to and also felt eerie or disturbed give that a like, dahil lang pagla-like ng video is konting segundo lang yon, isang tap lang yon, like nyo lang itong video na to kung hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe, bakit hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe, bakit? Hmm? But all you gotta do is give that subscribe button a punch in the face and come cool and and subscribe ka na, diba? Also, yung ating notification bell, make sure you just give that a small tap para always notified ka kapag may mga bagong uploads ako. Tapusin natin tong video na to. Maraming salamat sa pernod. Always support Filipino vloggers. Kita kayo sa lahat sa mga videos. Let's go!